What's up YouTube? Welcome back to The Nook. Now first things first, I want to apologize. There was supposed to be a Nintendo Switch unboxing video uploaded on Friday, but after recording the footage, turned out for whatever reason, I got no audio. I was really looking forward to making an unboxing video of the Switch, but due to technical errors, cannot do that because I cannot unbox it twice. However, getting to the point of this video, let's review the Switch. Now sadly, my copy of Breath of the Wild has not arrived yet, so I have been forced to play 1-2 Switch and the demo version of Poi Poi Tetris, as well as Dragon Quest 1 and 2. So I will be posting a Breath of the Wild game review sometime after I get it and have time to play the game. Beginning with the software aspects of the Switch, I think Nintendo did a very good job on the UI of the Switch. There have been some complaints that the UI of the Switch is too simple, but for a portable, I think it was a very good idea to keep it simple. You can access everything straight from the UI. It's very simple and straightforward. You even have dark mode in the settings, which I think is very beneficial to gamers who play mostly at night. It's a lot easier on the eyes. Overall, I think Nintendo did a great job with the UI and they shouldn't try to make it complex. I think its success comes from its simplicity. Now in terms of hardware, there were some positives as well as some negatives. There have been a lot of people asking who haven't had hands on with the Switch about the Joy-Cons and how sturdy they are when they're on the Switch. And I can confirm that once they're clicked on, it's, it feels like it's one whole device. There's no wiggle at all, it's very sturdy. When taking the Joy-Cons off of the Nintendo Switch, it, they come off they come off very smoothly. No problems whatsoever. Same goes with the grip. You know they're in once you hear them click. Taking them off is just as easy as taking them off of the Switch console. The one problem I have with the Joy-Cons are the straps. They're very easy to get on, but taking them off takes a, a little more effort than the Switch console and the grip. And when they're on, the top locks, but the bottom has a decent amount of wiggle. I do wish that there was a second lock on the bottom so that it feels a little more sturdy when you're using the Joy-Con separately. Now, probably the biggest complaint with the hardware is the kickstand. I think the biggest complaint hardware wise that the Switch is getting is the kickstand and that it feels cheap and that it'll be very easy to break. However, I did go on the train with a friend and we played 1-2 Switch for about an hour and I used the kickstand the entire time, didn't have any issues. Overall, even though the kickstand does feel cheaply made, I think it'll hold up. Now, since I do not have Breath of the Wild yet, I have been playing a lot of 1-2 Switch and Poyo Poyo Tetris. So 1-2 Switch has a total of 28 minigames, a shuffle mode, and a team mode. I think this game will be most enjoyed in a group setting if you're all playing against each other. When you only have two people, it's harder to enjoy it. Overall, it's a good game, but it's more of a time killer than a game that you want to continually play every day. Now, Poyo Poyo Tetris. So I downloaded the demo off of the Japanese store by making a Japanese Nintendo ID. I can't understand any of the menus in-game because there's no way to change the language from Japanese to English. The game's actually pretty fun, and you can play with up to four people, even on the demo mode. If you're looking for a game that maybe kills 15-20 minutes, I think Tetris is a good game to play for those times. For longer trips, it does get very it does get kind of boring very fast. However, I've only played the demo version, so I don't know how the full game will be different. Now, the dock. Now, I haven't experienced this for myself, but a lot of people have been complaining that when sliding the switch into the dock, it can scratch up the screen because there's such a small space for the switch to go. Hearing these complaints, I have been putting my switch in very carefully. So far, it's been fine. I haven't had any issues. I think if you're very careful with it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. However, I do recommend getting a screen protector as well as a case for the Switch and your games and any other accessories. On launch day, I went to GameStop and got myself the Elite Player Backpack. It's got a slot for the Switch with two connected Joy-Cons, six more Joy-Con slots, 
a slot for the Pro Controller, for the dock, and it and it's got a little pocket down here for some earbuds. There's a little slot up here where you can fit in the grip. Uh, in this pouch, you've got a slot for full-size headphones, which I think was a very good addition to it. And then you've got a pouch in the front for all the cables. Overall, I think this is a great buy if you travel a lot and want to carry everything with you and play your games on the TV versus just in handheld mode. I know another great choice is the messenger bag. The messenger bag has slots for everything that the Elite Player Backpack does besides the Pro Controller and has an easy pull-out slot for your Nintendo Switch as well as a case. It's $10 cheaper and I think it's just as good as the Elite Player Backpack. If you are looking for the cheaper option, definitely go with the Messenger Bag over the Elite Player Backpack. They both do almost the same things. If you are getting a Pro Controller, I do recommend spending the extra $10 for the Elite Player Backpack just so you have that dedicated slot for it. Well, that's all the time I have for you guys today. Please subscribe and comment in the section below. Feel free to follow me on Twitter as well as like this video. This is Ryan, signing off.